way too long, popular contemporary Australian music was regarded as too commercialised, too disposable and unimportant to be worthy of greater consideration, let alone preservation. A ghastly noise fuelled by teenage angst, alcohol and chemicals that generally inspired a younger generation to become uncontrollably happy, sad, drunk, stoned or pregnant. However, this music proved to be persistent, resilient and significant. The Australian Music Vault celebrates the soundtrack of our country's musical history. It's a free, permanent exhibit housed within Melbourne's Arts Centre. Could it have been in any other city in Australia? No. <laughs> Very, no, no, no. Could only be in Melbourne. Absolutely. This is the musical capital of Australia, isn't it? There's no doubt about that. Yeah. And Molly should know. Would you like to see John Paul Young back on Countdown doing that? With over 50 years' experience as a music critic, TV host, journalist and record producer, Molly knows and has worked with the absolute best in the business. But it's the Australian artists that hold a special place in his heart. Good morning, guys. It's John Travolta with you. <laughs> Who are the bands do you think that took the Australian sound overseas? Well, obviously, um, bands like ATD, yeah. uh, Spirit Ends, um, Men at Work. Yeah. Um, the oils. The oils. Of all the great exhibits here in the Music Vault, this poster wall is probably one of the most popular. And it just goes to show the kind of intergenerational effect that Australian music has had on the Australian public. I noticed a mother and her daughter in here earlier just spending half an hour. The mother pointing out all the concerts she'd been to and the daughter pointing out all the concerts she'd been to. I noticed there's one at the top there. I actually played at that gig, 1979. But it's not just performers. The exhibit also pays tribute to the producers, the designers, the promoters, and some of the legendary instruments. Melbourne's musical repertoire goes far beyond pop and rock music. This is a city with music in its veins and its laneways. Melbourne is also the jazz capital of Australia and this lane, Bennett's Lane, was the epicentre of jazz in the city. The Bennett's Lane Jazz Club was so cool, even Prince played a couple of private gigs here to about 200 people. The club was so cool, Lonely Planet called it the best jazz club in the world. Unfortunately, the owners bowed to the developers' pressure and sold the club. But jazz has found many other homes around the city, including this one at the northern end of the CBD. Of the more than 3,000 hotel rooms I've stayed in around the world, I've never stayed in one quite like this, with Charlie Parker, Duke Ellington, Stan Getz and Ella Fitzgerald staring down from the walls with a little syncopated improvisational 5-8 funky beat oozing forth from the telly. And, well, who doesn't love a little sax above the leather? There's something going on here. I think it's jazz. With 150 themed rooms, the Jazz Corner Hotel strikes all the right chords with music lovers. The studio rooms, as well as the one and two bedroom apartments, are all self-contained and come with views over Port Phillip Bay and the neighbouring Docklands area. But what sets this hotel apart is its clever ensemble of entertainment, food and accommodation. One of Melbourne's top live music venues, Bird's Basement, is located underneath the hotel. And, as you would expect, the hotel offers packages which cover your stay as well as dinner and a show downstairs. Hey. 